G'day fabulous people and welcome back to another episode with us here at DMW and uh, behind me this is the video everyone's been asking for the walk around of the big Y62 and how we built this car. Now this has been an absolute epic journey and I reckon that this thing has turned out absolutely mint. It just looks so sexy, it is so functional, it is an animal off-road. This car is absolutely amazing. A quick rundown of how this build went. Obviously, we got this car as a wagon. We did a few other little videos with it as stock form wagon. We did the towing test and a few different things. I've been four wheel driving it as a wagon. We actually didn't film that, but the thing went really, really well in stock form with stock tires. So instead of boring you standing here, let's go check it all out. Well, let's start with the favorite part of the car, the Harrop Supercharger. It was an awesome vehicle beforehand, stock form. You know, we just had a set of pacemaker headers on it and uh, coupled to the exhaust. It made plenty of power, sounded awesome. But now, this thing is next level with that supercharger on it. And look, if you wanna check out how that supercharger went on there, a great friend of ours, Craig from Highfields Mechanical, we made a video about that, putting it all on there and dyno tuning it. So make sure you check that video out. So now I've spoken about the supercharger and my favorite part of the car, let's talk about this bull bar and the winch we've got in here. So I wanted to keep this car a sleek look. So that's why we went for a bumper replacement bull bar, winch bar actually. And then what we put in that winch bar is this TJM 12,000 pound winch with the uh, Diamantina type rope on it. I mean, it is absolutely unreal. The only thing is I haven't used that winch to recover myself. I've only used it to recover other people. So maybe that's not a bad thing. This thing is just such an animal off-road, I haven't got to use the winch yet for myself. So to make this even better for four-wheel driving, we have developed these Unreal Bash plates that go underneath the car. Now, we've also made a set of sliders for the diff at the rear. So if anything ever happens when you're off-road, it's not gonna smash the aluminum housing, it's only ever gonna get that big staunch steel frame that we made to protect it. Now, these bash plates are really, really well made and look, they're really, really tough. I've bottomed this out on heaps and heaps of rock so far and this thing has just held up unbelievably. As you can see, I've been using this car and that ROH assault wheel has been copping an absolute hiding. Now, right behind it are these sliders and you can see I've been scraping these things on all these rocks and whatever else, no dints. I mean, yes, it's taken the powder coat off and all that sort of stuff, but no dints. Now, these are suited to our chassis extensions and you know and we are making them for the wagons as well but this particular one here has got all that staunch stuff that goes around the bracing that we do for the 450 extension and the 650 extensions and these are like tough tough as let's talk about the suspension in this car now as all my vehicles have it's got dobinson springs through it and it's got airbag man airbags now that is the easy bit, okay? But these Y62s have got a really funny front strut and they're obviously hydraulically assisted and they've got an accumulator that runs oil to it and they're a little bit hard to pull apart. Some people weld extensions on the bottom control arms to give these a two inch lift at the front. We decided to pull those front struts apart and we then put the Dobinson spring in it. So it's got a proper lift kit in this vehicle. So that's what's different about our car versus some that are out there. We've actually gone the extra mile to pull them apart and put the proper springs in. So when we were chopping this car, we found out that there was a big massive cavity in behind where the wheel arches go. And you know, instead of wasting that space, we thought, what could we do with it? And that's how we came up with the idea of these slide out drawers. Now, I didn't want to have a handle or anything on the front. And uh, we sort of got back to the drawing board and think, what can we do? And we just went, well, why don't we do an electric actuator? So, you know, we ended up coupling that to the locking system of the car so no one can break into it. So it's as easy as this. You press the button and then you 
pull that out. And I mean, what a great use for that space that sometimes, you know, when you're doing a conversion, it's just hard to do this type of work and you just sheet that off. But I mean, I think this is just well worth the extra effort we went to. And look at it, it looks amazing. And it's so functional, you know? Oh, just a really, really cool finish. Here we are at the business end of the vehicle. These XTR trays need no introduction. Like I've had one on the 79 series for ages and it has been through hell and back. For a really lightweight aluminium style tray, I tell you, these things will take an absolute flogging. Now, on this particular one, I wanted to keep it really, really simple. I didn't want to have the canopy on all the time. I wanted to utilize the tray of the car. And I mean, without having tray sides on, it's pretty useless too. So we've obviously coupled it with the tray sides. It looks unreal with how we've got the curved rear end on it. We've got the toolboxes looking like they're integrated into the tray. I mean, they are a separate item, but the ergonomics that we've gone into trying to design and make it that good looking, I mean, these things here are cool as, you know? Now, inside this box, We've utilised the space in here, and there's heaps more room to put recovery stuff and whatever else, but we've got the big TJM twin cylinder air compressor. And I mean, this thing is an absolute animal. Pumps up these 37 tyres in no time. But hey, what a great space to have such a great off-road item like that compressor in that toolbox there, and still have extra space. Around here, we've got the big slide out sealed drawer. And I mean, these still need no introduction either. They're on the 200 tray, the XT tray, the XTR. I mean, it's our signature thing. You know, it keeps everything dry and it acts as a table as well. And that's the best thing when you're out camping. So on the back of the tray, we've got the twin spares. What's holding those spares are the DMW wheel carriers. Now, these ones here are adjustable. They fit a 37 and they can go down to a 33. We've made them that adjustable. I mean, they're a smick little setup on the back there. And you know, they hold the tire really well. Now, right here, we've got the tag tow bar the back. You know, like you can't have a car without having the tow bar. And yet this is really set up well. That's really high, the way Tag's designed this. And it's got the recovery points on the back. And I mean, we've got the, uh, the big caravan plug there. We've got the uh, red Anderson, which is for the electronic stability control on uh, caravans and trailers that they run these days. We've got our charge Anderson, and obviously we've got our airbags in the rear as well. So yep, let's, let's take a walk around the other side of the car and have a look at, bit of a look at the exhaust. So I know it's a bit funny, but I've got two lots of exhaust. Now this particular one that I've got on the car is our custom off-road exhaust that you know I run for wheeling the tracks and all that sort of stuff. I mean it is an unbelievably sounding exhaust. Now this one here we've custom made at work. Our young bloke Alex is just a fabulous fabricator here. He likes doing exhaust in his spare time and when I said I wanted to make a custom one for going wheeling he put his hand up and he goes Reuben I want to build that and he has built an absolute cracking exhaust. It sounds absolutely mint and having them twin side pipes here it just looks unreal. On our XTR tray packages, they all get a water tank. Now this is where we fill them from is right here. Now we use a similar filler on the other side for the fuel to go into. It's just in a great position. I mean, these are so easy to fill. You just put the hose straight in there and it fills up in a jiffy. And it's the same when you're filling it with fuel. You know, it just puts the nozzle goes in there and I can just hold it like that and it just fills up unbelievable. Well, that wraps up our walk around of the Y62 today. I mean, it has been such a big epic build, as you can see from all the things we've just shown you. And I mean, this car has turned out smick in my opinion. Now, there's a few different things that I want to do to finish this car off. I've still got to put a snorkel on the car and I don't know whether I'm going to go a big five inch stainless steel snorkel that I'm going to powder coat black or I'm going to go like a safari style snorkel. I mean, put in the comments below what you guys reckon I should go. Do you reckon I should put a, a big stainless snorkel on there or do you reckon I should go the plastic style safari? I mean, that'd be great because that'll help me make that decision. Now, that brings me to the interior. Now, I'm not that sold on the wood grain. It's one of the things that sort of irks me. It's just a little bit too much in my face. And uh, so I think I'm going to do the wood grain delete in the vehicle. 
you know, maybe stereo upgrade, I'm not sure. I don't really like the big aftermarket ones. They seem to have dramas with maps and, uh, you know, the wattage of the stereos that are coming out of it. You don't get the best sound quality from those big infotainment ones. So I don't know whether I'll just put an amp or, you know, upgrade the stereo. I'm really lost on that one as well. So they're the only couple of extra things that I'll probably want to change on the car. And look, comment below and tell me what you guys would do differently or what you would add to the car because, you know, anything we can do to make this vehicle better again than what it is, is going to be absolutely fabulous. So thank you very much for watching this video and uh, I hope that you've liked it. And uh, if you have, make sure you like and subscribe so you get to catch all the other videos that we make about all the epic vehicles that we build. So thanks again, guys. I'll catch you on the next one.